Hi everyone, it's Michelle here and I'm back with another video. Um, yeah, whoa, it's been a crazy, crazy, crazy few days. I just want to make a disclaimer before I start. I am Canadian. I do not live in the United States. I am merely an outsider looking in. I do understand that there are way there are so much going on in the world right now. There's so much to talk about. There are there's tragedy upon tragedy to comment on, but this is what I want to talk about right now. This is what's on my mind and my heart right now. This is not me bashing the states. This is not me generalizing all police, generalizing all um, black people, generalizing all white people, generalizing anybody. This is just me wanting to talk. So I just want to make that very, very, very clear. This is not to compare Canada to the US. This is not what that video is about. I'm not comparing the policing in the US to the policing in Canada. I'm not comparing racism in the US to racism in Canada. That's not what this is about. This is just about me frustrated, confused, curious. I just want to talk. I just want to talk. Last week, I posted a video um, completely unrelated to any of this. It's the wig falling off video. And um, typically what I do is I post my video. Sometimes if I post it too late at night, I wait till the next day to promote it on my Instagram or on my um, my Facebook. That's where I just, because you know, just to get the word out there that I have a new video up. So I posted this video and then I went to bed. The next morning I woke up and I went on Instagram, like a lot of us do, and my Instagram was on fire. It was on fire. Like, I was just like, what is going on? Like, I'm scrolling and I see like, and I see like, you know, a black background and a hashtag and a white thin font. And I know something happened. And I'm like, what happened? Like, who, who are we? What are we? praying for today what tragedy happened today what, what's what's happening because I just know something's going on so I see hashtag Alton Sterling hashtag Alton Sterling black lives matter black lives matter injustice pictures of Malcolm X police officers and I'm like okay I get where this is going so I obviously I don't bother to post my video that day because it just seemed insensitive because of everything that was going on in my timeline so I did some research. I went and I googled this this um, situation, this killing. I went and googled it and I saw that there was video and I saw that there was a video of it. So that happened and I was like, whoa, like, oh my goodness, like another one, like another one, another one happened in the States, another, you know, black a person being killed by white police you know in kind of like an extreme way six shots while they're being held down so it makes you think why did it have to be six shot why did it have to be so excessive? why and you start thinking you start making up scenarios well, well maybe this happened and, and maybe that happened and I try to I try to you know do research and read and, and watch and watch things and see what's all going on before I go off of the news of social media because a lot of things on social media are inaccurate so you know I came to the conclusion like whoa this is a crazy situation that is so sad and then you watch the press conference and you're just so sad and you're so heartbroken over it and then Philando Castile happened and that situation that watching that video the whole video that I, I think what I saw was the full video that broke me like that situation broke my heart like I live in Canada so a lot of these things that happen in the US um, you know they're kind of just over in the US and you know Americans they have their race relations issues and they're gonna riot Black Lives Matters and you know it's gonna be like this person's another hash another hashtag that gets ha added to the hashtag list you know they slot out another part another section for their name and then it kind of it's over and then the police go on trial and then they don't get punished and then 
it's it's over and then life goes on right so typically that's that's what happens not for the families not for the friends of the people affected i'm talking about just as a canadian person on this side looking in so then philando castile happened and it broke me and it really made me question things in a way that i never questioned them before as it concerns the to the United States of America and racism. I am completely not like knowledgeable on slavery and civil rights movement and Malcolm X and Martin Luther King Jr. I'm not talking about that information that I know. I'm talking about I'm not talking about the information that I I just I know because of, of Black History Month and I know because I'm black and I know because you're you know you it happened and it affected so many people. I'm talking about, and it changed so much, and it changed so much, but I'm not talking about just that part of it. I'm talking about like now. So what I want to know is, are black Americans crazy? I mean, and when I say are black Americans crazy, I mean, did black people in America in 2016 just make up problems? Did they just say, you know what, we want to, black lives matter, because you know what, we just want to cause some. We just want to cause some mess. We don't have anything better to do. Um, let's just rally. You know, let's get all these people and come to these marches and let's just start start problems because we don't have anything better to do. <laughs> like because that's what some of these people commenting make it seem like. Like and maybe there are people within that movement that have ill intentions because there's always people in good good movements and and. People always, perv there's always people that pervert things that are good. If you look at the church, if you look at schools, there's always people that take advantage of, a, of something that's meant for good. So that goes without saying that there might be people in there that have ill intention, but some of these people make it seem like these people are just, they just want everything. They just want it all. Black people just want all the rights. <laughs> like they just want all the rights. <laughs> No, you you have enough rights. We've given you enough. You have your own month and your own channel. You want more than that? And my question is because I don't live in the United States of America. Please, somebody answer the question. Are black people just crazy out here in America? Are they just saying police are bothering us <laughs> for no reason? Is there, a, is, is there a percentage of people that are like that and a percentage of people that really experience some genuine discrimination and racism? Or is everybody painted with one brushstroke? Is every police officer evil and trying to kill black people? I don't, I don't, I'm going to go with no. I'm going to go with the majority of them aren't. So murdering police officers is not the answer. But I just want somebody to let, like, our... Are American black people, are black people in America really under attack? Are black people in America really facing discrimination at an alarming rate? Are black people in America really, you know, still marginalized? Or are they just making it up because they want to be on CNN every other weekend? This really affected me, and it's not to belittle any of the other unjust killings that happened in the past in the States. It's not to belittle any of them and say that they were less important. Some of the things that these people on television and online are saying are, are just so... I don't know, it's like the person is not a person. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's disturbing when the body of the man is not even cold yet and the blame is already getting put on him people are saying well the police officers had to act and they had to move and they had to do what they had to do and it's his fault he shouldn't have resisted we didn't we didn't see everything we didn't see everything okay but if you didn't see everything then why are you already shifting blame on him if you have to wait till you see everything to shift blame that's something that it, it disturbs me. It's disturbing because 
I mean, and I know people are not necessarily supposed to, their job is not to be compassionate. That's not their job. Their job is to say what they're, what's on their minds and report the news, and report what's going on. So maybe it's, maybe I'm expecting the wrong thing, right? They're not, that's not their job. They're not grief counselors, right? So maybe I'm just, just I was just expecting the wrong things. And then they say, well, you have a criminal record and you're a criminal and you resisted and you're you're you shouldn't be where you are you're a criminal and you know you if you just listen to the police officer if you just do what you're supposed to do you'll be fine but then you get a Falano Castile situation where from all, all we know is is he was doing everything he was supposed to be doing from what we know he was supposed he was doing everything that he was supposed to do so why was he shot four times in a sitting in his car so that argument of well if you just stop resisting well if you just stop that's why black people i think are just scared and confused because now you're okay but it, what i did what i was supposed to do so what even when you even when you're not, Bronze Goddess did an amazing heartfelt video. Um, the Fancy Faced, who typically, she's pretty neutral and does makeup videos online. She doesn't really get into political stuff. She did a heartfelt video. Daystorm Power did a heartfelt video. And the reason I mentioned those three people is because... You know, there's always the convers. There's always the, another conversation. Like, well, black people have a chip on their shoulder. Like, black people have a chip on their shoulder. You know, they're walking around waving slavery over over um, white people's heads for white guilt, so they can get whatever they want. Or they walk around defeated. Or they walk around in in poverty and in you know and all these situate and violent situations and they don't pull themselves up and they don't try to do anything that's why things like, and then when things like this happen they they wonder why and the reason i bring up those three people is because those three youtubers from my sense of them is that they don't have chips on their shoulders i don't think being black they're successful all three of them they're intelligent you know they they work really hard they're not waving the i hate white people flag in their videos they do what they need to do they take care of themselves they take care of their families and yet it affected them so much because they because they are afraid and as a canadian as a torontonian canada is a big country canada has its own problems but as a as a black woman in Toronto, I've been a lot of things, you know, I've felt discrimination in my own ways. But one thing I could say is that I've never feared for my life because of my skin color. Ever. I never thought that somebody was going to harm me because I was a black girl. Maybe tease, maybe get teased or something or whatever, but I never ever thought that somebody would hurt me so whether or not these um, shootings are racially charged is not even the point because they might not be but the fact is that they're happening and black people who don't seem to have a chip on their shoulder are terrified so isn't that enough of a basis to have a conversation instead of shooting at shooting blame black lives matter's fault the police officer's fault white people's fault black people's fault you didn't raise your kids properly you have white people everybody <laughs> they're ter they're afraid that their husbands aren't going to come back from going to the grocery store because he's big and a muscular guy and if he gets pulled over he has bass in his voice and the police officer might get it shook or intimidated and he might just kill him. That is so scary. I just feel like nobody listens. Nobody's listening. Everybody's just saying stuff and per like, like 
everybody has a motive even the people that complain that black lives matter have motive like have a motive and they're trying to push this agenda and they're trying to push this false narrative even the people that say that have a motive to push whatever they're pushing everybody has a motive to push something everybody's just there's so much noise there's so much there's so many tweets there's so much stuff there's so much news coverage there's this there's that and it's just I just think right now for me I just want to be a because of the position that I'm in all the way here is I just want to be compassionate to my brothers and sisters in the United States that are afraid the ones that are genuinely I just want to be compassionate if you're out there and you're genuinely afraid because you don't know what's gonna happen to you or your family or your friends I just want to you know stand with you in that sense it's never gonna work fear it's it's never gonna work with fear it's never gonna get fixed with fear because if one side is afraid that the other side is gonna shoot first they're gonna shoot first the sad part is the news will dissipate over the next while maybe when the police officers are on trial and that whole thing comes up again but for now the, uh, the next news cycle has started a long time ago and then it just gets pushed to the side and it just becomes another tragedy another hashtag two more names added to the hashtag list um police officers murdered another tragedy and then it's just we move on life goes on so with all that being said can somebody answer my question are black people in america just crazy one thing that i will say is that i want to thank us give a special thank you to my best friend for putting me on to officer tommy norman on instagram um, he is just amazing. If you haven't heard of him, go to his Instagram. He's um, a police officer from Little Rock, Arkansas, and he's just doing amazing things there with the kids and the youth and the community. And I know, just based on reading his um, his biography, that this is not for show. This is not for um, Instagram likes. That he has been doing this before any of this stuff was blown up, right? So. He is just, like when you talk about like shining, like that is somebody who I think is just a light in a dark, scary place for people. And it, I just go on his page, man, because he, thank God I found that page because I was just at the tipping point where I was just like, whoa, like I just had nothing else. I just want to give a really heartfelt condolences to everybody that was lost, all the lives that were lost. And... Philando Castile's girlfriend Diamond, I think Diamond Lavish. Um, I'm so sorry that you had to endure that. I'm so sorry that you had to go through that. I'm so sorry that your child had to go through that. And I just pray that there honestly is peace in your life some way and that comfort will come some way and that there will be justice for him. And um, yeah, just thank you for having the courage to to just show the world what was happening I have an immense respect for police officers that work super hard and that protect serve and protect neighborhoods i was raised in a culture double whammy being jamaican double whammy growing up in the inner city <laughs> that doesn't res like doesn't necessarily as a whole respects police and teaches you not to trust police and that police are actually against you you guys are actually divided but thankfully my mom taught me to have my own mind and to think about things my own way and I never grew up with that chip on my shoulder against police I've seen my friends in Canada get profiled I've witnessed things happen so I'm not saying it doesn't happen but I've just never as a whole blamed the whole organization you know and I could be ignorant but I've never I've never blamed the whole organization I just feel like there's a lack of respect for people's struggle what people deem as a struggle like if somebody feels like they're 
being harmed in some type of way who are you to say no you're not no you're not no you're not no you're not because this is why and because of this you're not walking in their shoes <laughs> like how could you make such a such a bold statement like that you're not walking in their shoes you don't know what it's like it's not fair that's why I'm saying nobody listens. Everybody's just like, ah, well, I have to counteract this thing and I have to fight back and I have to say this and I have to make my own hashtag because I also saw on Instagram um, a guy, I don't even, I don't even know his Instagram name. It was in my explore page. And he was like going around and praying with police officers at a time like this. And he's another example of somebody who's on the other side, he's black and he's another person that's on the other side of this like how Tommy Norman's on the police officer side of this. He's on the other side of this shining and he's on the other side of this trying to bring hope. You know? So there it's not there are good people out there and there are good things happening out there, but it's just overall it's just a mess.